Good morning, YouTube. It's Christmas. 12.28 uh, in the morning. Saturday, December 25th. Yep, been Christmas for uh, like 28 minutes. Um, I'm walking home from the uh, Wander Inn. So, um, yeah, I haven't really shot many videos today. It hasn't been... I don't know. It's been a pretty low-key day, to be honest. Um, got... Uh, uh, well, I, I did shoot that video where I was uh, stuck for a half hour at the uh, light rail station, which all in all was pretty enjoyable. Um, yeah, I got home, was kind of surprised to find Priscilla not there. Uh, she uh, woke me up. On, I was I didn't really know what to think. Like, her laptop was there. I mean, if, if that wasn't there, I would have thought she might have left. She had been talking about maybe taking a trip to see her family in Georgia. But like, I'm thinking, you know, I think she would have told me about that before leaving, but didn't really know what to think. Then again, I would kind of think she would tell me before, you know, not, not being home. But anyway, uh, anyway, she, uh, oh, she got home in the afternoon and, um, was a lot more affectionate than normal. And that was, uh, that was pretty nice. And, you know, honestly, I think she was wanting me to stay home the day with her and, I'm kind of, I don't know, kind of having some second thoughts and thinking maybe I should have gone home sooner, but I uh, I ended up, I think as I said in the last video, I ended up leaving all my stuff over at Bullock's and decided that I would just, you know, bite the bullet and tough out the rain today and go work on music, which I did. Um, got there, uh, took off a little bit later and got there a little bit later than normal. I feel, well, I mean, I don't know, that's such an unusual time to get there. I think I got there around, uh, oh, I don't know. I want to say probably about 5.30 in the evening. Well, I can't help but notice the sidewalk that I'm walking on here is really new. And if memory serves, this street didn't used to have a sidewalk. So I know I'm just like, <laughs> just complete left turn with uh, stuff, but you know, that's just kind of how my mind works, but yeah, memory serves, this street didn't used to have a sidewalk, like very recently didn't have a sidewalk, so kind of, uh, kind of exciting to see the city of Phoenix putting sidewalks on residential streets that lack them, um, I'd like to see a lot more of that, as I, uh, walk down a lot of residential streets that are lacking sidewalks and uh this is this is actually aside from that guy parking on the sidewalk this is actually pretty nice uh, anyway this is the first time i think i've ever taken this route coming home from uh coming home from wander in but i know i just didn't really feel like walking down uh, some kind of drama going on there um, I just didn't feel like walking down McDowell the whole way, but when I walked out of the back of the bar, it occurred to me that McDowell was less backtracking than the side street that I usually go to, uh, which I think is, I want to say that's, uh, 40, uh, probably 41st place. Anyway, ah, oh, darn. Just walking by one of those spots where it says the year on the sidewalk. Well, that sounded like a gunshot. All right, Merry Christmas. Ah, oh, thrills. Thrilling sounds of living in a city. All right, um, sorry I got all sidetracked by looking down and seeing that I'm walking on new sidewalks. Uh, oh, what was I going to say? So, yeah, I got to... Um, took the, took the 44 to the light rail to the 60, no crazy detours, thank God. God, that was horrible yesterday. Um, but yeah, I made it to the, uh, the barge, mostly just kind of kept to myself. It wasn't, it wasn't dead, but it wasn't busy, but mostly I just kind of kept to myself. And, um, and, and of course, you know, last night... Since I was on, uh, since today was on a Sunday bus schedule, I was stuck there over an hour longer than I normally am. 
And I had a guy put in a request to sing uh, Kenny Rogers last night, put in a request to sing Kenny Rogers' Love Will Turn You Around, which I was surprised as hell that I didn't have that song. Like, I remember that being a popular song. And it's always one of the songs by Kenny Rogers that I've, you know, really liked. I mean, I remember that being a hit when I was a little, little kid. And yeah, I was probably about 11 or 12 when that came out. And, um... I do, you know, I told the guy, of course I got that. <laughs> and I looked through my library, I'm like, wait, I, I don't. I really don't. Dang. And and I found it, you know, not a problem. Now, he ended up bailing out before he sang the song. And the guy was coming off, like, really impatient. So, you know, whatever. I mean, as busy as that bar was, obviously there's, there's two things you need to, one of two things you need to do if you're wanting to sing karaoke. Either, either one, be patient and wait your turn. <laughs> Or two, tip the karaoke DJ. And uh, just for the record, I got absolutely no tips last night. So that's a little frustrating. Um, which is, you know, why sometimes I get kind of short with people when they're really demanding. It's like, you know, maybe I'd be a little more accommodating if you were tipping me. Hello. In fact, I had one person one time that was like, I'm next. And I'm like, no, you're not. So the only way that you're next is if you write your song request down on a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Sounds like there's a bit of a celebration happening at the house to the north there. It's actually a pretty pleasant route to rock. To to walk from the bar like this. Um anyway, uh, so yeah, I worked on so I got that song, and, and, and of course he didn't sing it, but it's something I was kind of eager to get into my karaoke library, so I added that. And kind of the way I, I work on music these days is I start with a song, generally something that somebody has recently asked for or wanted to sing, or something that's, you know, just recently piqued my interest, maybe something I recently purchased on karaoke version, but there's, there's a starting point of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to get this song added. And then I go through all the stuff that I'm sitting on, and, and believe me, I'm sitting on a lot of karaoke that I haven't got cataloged and databased um, and, and, and properly into the library. Just because there's so much of it and there's just so little time to spend on it. But um, generally after the first one, I just continue to work on everything I have from that artist. In, until I either run out of time or I run out of things by that artist. And I was surprised how much I found that I was sitting on by Kenny Rogers. Because I've already got a really fleshed out section of Kenny Rogers karaoke. But uh, um, all the songs just a handful of duets that, to be honest, I wasn't familiar with. The songs that just were not really big hits. But they're all, they're all right songs. I mean, it's Kenny Rogers, right? How bad could it be? Uh... And, and I got the songs to go with all of them, except for one, which was a song I think came out in like 2004. Supposed to be, you know, it was a comeback attempt and it, it didn't really do much, but um, it was a new track that was included on a substantial uh, Great Assist collection. Wow, I'm glad I was looking down. I just about lost my dang bus pass. Uh, anyway... Um, yeah, that one I got a video for. All the other songs were just songs that uh, didn't have videos. So I just added the songs to compare to the, uh, to the, uh, to the karaoke to make sure the karaoke was on point. And, and I had one of those moments where I'm really glad that I take the effort to do that with every karaoke track that I add. Because I had one karaoke track that purported to be that is to say, what it said in its file name and also in its splash screen was that it was uh, um, for the good times in the style of Kenny Rogers. And, and, and that's one of those songs. It was originally written by, well, it was written by uh, Chris Christopherson. I forget the first artist that recorded it, but it, it wasn't a big hit for him. But it was first a really huge hit for Ray Price. And since then, many, many artists from, from Al Green to, uh, oh gosh, uh, to Kenny Rogers have covered it. And I did find a cover version by Kenny Rogers. It was 
uh, from like 1971, Kenny Rogers in the first edition. And that arrangement sounded nothing like this particular karaoke track. And I couldn't find another version by Kenny Rogers that, that sounded like the karaoke track. So I ended up not adding it, which, you know, quite a bit of time spent to not add a song. But I, uh, I figure I dodge a bullet, you know, because at least it, eventually I'm not going to have somebody want to sing it in the style of Kenny Rogers and be like, hey, that isn't what the Kenny Rogers version sounds like. And I'll just be sitting there looking dumb as like what might have happened last night with the uh, uh, karaoke I have that was, is supposedly Nat King Cole's um, The Christmas Song, also known as Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. I, uh, you know, and I was really going to try to listen to that today and compare it. I never did get around to that. And honestly, like, it's it's Christmas Day. Like, I'm I'm done. I'm done with Christmas music until next, next Thanksgiving. But uh, hopefully next season I'll try to remember that... Uh, that that's that I did have a complaint on that. I need to maybe try to you know see if that version is on point, and if not, get one that is, since that is a pretty still you know remains to this day a pretty popular Christmas song. Um, so uh, really rainy day to day. It's it's nice now, as so you can see, it's pretty wet outside, but it's it's kind of chilly outside, but it's at least it's dry now, so that's a good thing. I'm going to take the shortcut through the park. Um, it looked like the rain ran most of the homeless people out of the park, so hopefully I can walk through here without having to have any unpleasant encounters with the unhoused. Um, oh, and I didn't even think about this. This is a dirt path, so it might be a little muddy. So far, so good, though. <sighs> So anyway, yeah, kind of a bland Christmas. Uh, still don't know where my daughter Lily is. Um, I did chat quite a bit with my uh, other daughter Allison, and she got her uh, got her um, calendar that I sent her today, which is kind of kind of nice. I didn't on the date that I mailed it. I honestly didn't expect it to get to her till next week, so that's nice. So kind of a not even a Christmas gift for me to be honest. It's from my sister Robin, but. So I was able to send her something for Christmas and spend a little time chatting with her. So as much as it kind of sucks not having my daughter here in Arizona with me for Christmas, at least at least we had some contact today, and that's a good thing. And she actually kind of apologized for not contacting me more, which, which to be honest, I mean, considering our history and how many years her mother kept her away from me, I'm, I'm honestly really happy she contacts me as much as she does. Um, I certainly know... Uh, guys that have daughters of similar age that just absolutely never hear from their daughters. So, so that was nice. Um, and the time I spent with Priscilla was nice. And honestly, I probably should have rushed back home to her. But I don't know. I'm just kind of. <laughs> I've got my. We got my Friday night routine, and this is kind of it. Um, uh, one thing pretty notable, I should mention. Uh, so I, I got out of the bar at about. Uh, the bar, <laughs> I've been in two bars today, um, got out of Bullock's at about 9 p.m. And um, actually felt bad. I wasn't fully broke down when uh, DJ Cat showed up. And which was, she said I was all right. I don't feel like I was particularly in her way. And the bar was so empty, like, well, I don't want to say empty, but I mean, it wasn't crowded. So it wasn't like I was you know, holding her back from starting her, her set or anything, but... That's a you know, muddy chunk of something going on on the sidewalk. Yikes. That's where it used to be buckled up. So they finally came and knocked the buckled up piece away and they haven't finished putting down new cement. Oh, I see a vehicle up ahead of me. It looks like they're just kicking back in their car. Um... Anyway, yeah, at 9 o'clock, I just, uh, the, the band did confirm, like, a couple of the members of the band did say that they're not, uh, they're not performing tomorrow night, but I, I never get a, get, get a chance to ask Kat if, like, she was just doing a DJ set tomorrow night, or if there's just no entertainment there, because to be honest, I'd love to do karaoke tomorrow at, at Bullock's, I could really use the money and 
it'd just be something nice to do, you know? I mean, any extra shows I can get right now, I'm, I'd really like to be doing them, but uh, still no word on that. Um, huh, um, so anyway, the most notable thing that happened, I, I just keep talking about all this other shit, and I keep forgetting to mention that, is, uh, oh, this cement right here looks like brand new. Um, I had, uh, I had, uh, when I, when I left the bar at about, not, well, actually it was exactly nine o'clock, um, I'm waiting for the bus on Bethany home, and I felt like I'd spent some really good quality time with Priscilla this afternoon, as opposed to our usual kind of ignoring each other and separate ends of the apartment, and... So I, I thought I'd call her and just kind of see, you know, where her head was at, what she wanted to do tonight, and so on. And and uh, trying to call her number from the first Obama phone, I got connected to uh, Assurance Wireless and a recording telling me that it was outside their business hours and offering to connect me to their automated system, which I just hung up on. Um, so, and I messed with the phone a little bit more between there and like the, uh, the, um, Chris Town, uh, Montebello Transit Center. And apparently that phone is shut off. I really don't know why. I haven't got any notice as to why. I don't know if it's because, uh, but yeah, there's no, there's no service. I can't text. I can't call. I can't, uh. I mean, it's still it's still connecting to Assurance Wireless, and I'm thinking that's just because it's got an Assurance Wireless SIM card in it. But uh, yeah, there's no I can't make calls, can't receive calls, can't send texts, and I'm not sure what time that happened. I do know, like earlier in the evening, I was receiving texts on it, so I don't know. It happened sometime this evening. Um, I I really don't know if it's just because I so thoroughly abused my data last month. I would be surprised if that's why it is, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. Um, or if they basically got wind that I got another Obama phone through um, True Connect in the uh, Lifeline phone. Uh, Lifeline phone program was like, yep, we're already paying for that one, so shut this one down. It still seems like I would have got like a a text or a message or some some kind of push through message something letting me know that that was going to happen so i don't know i don't expect they will be uh they'll be answering their phone uh anybody at assurance will be answering the phone tomorrow so i guess i'll figure that out on monday so between now and monday my main phone number is off and that kind of sucks but uh yeah you know i mean if that's gone and my Seemingly unlimited Wi-Fi hotspot is dead. Well, <laughs> and it was good while it lasted. Um, I don't know. Figure that out on Monday. And hopefully I, I'll be really upset if I lose that phone number. I've had that phone number for a long, long time. Um, I don't know. Thinking really seriously about getting, getting with Mint Mobile. They seem to have the best deal for uh, like airtime with minimal, like unlimited calls and texts with minimal data. Um, and it'd be nice to be able to just make calls and text on my iPhone again. Anyway, I know, pretty boring Christmas, but that's, that's what's up today. Um, um, thanks for watching. Maybe tomorrow will be more interesting. <laughs>